I rode so many of these boards, I couldn't even tell you. Like, it had the perfect tail and nose on it, and I would saved it. And I was like, I'm always going to have this board, so when I actually don't have a board to ride, or I got to sit there and pick out 10 boards that I can't ride that got steep tails and shit, I'm going to have this one. I just like to hang out with Alyssa the most, probably, because we just like to do the same stuff. We like most of the same music. You know, at that time, we were just smoking bud and, you know, just drinking and just skating, you know. So it was like just somebody I'd kick it with on the normal. But, like, everybody on the team was still cool. Even, you know, you kicked it with everybody. Muska was running the show pretty much at that time. You know, he was like the hot dude. You know, like, Jamie was like the vet, you know, and Ed was just like the vet, the owner. Pretty much everybody on that team had prior to Ed Temple and board, you know. And then Jamie, but nobody was just going as hard as he was with everything. And, you know, with Donnie being like the new pro, you know, me, Alyssa, and, and Anderson, it was kind of like just the young bucks, just the rookies. There was a routine, you know, we would sit on Jamie's back porch and we would all get stoned every morning. You know, I'd wake up to Chad and Alyssa out in the back doing bong rips. And then, uh, you know, somebody would maybe try and go surfing and then we'd go find grip tape and just do regular everyday skate stuff when you're trying to film a part. When we had the old Tomietto blue van, mid late 90s in San Diego, it was a good time. Do you think that was hard for her to like get into a van and go on a tour with a bunch of skaters? I think it was hard. Mostly for other people. Cause that's, cause that's a question she's always had to answer all the time. Even back in the, even back then, it would, that was the question everyone would come with to her with like, oh, is it crazy hanging out with these guys? You know, what, what's up with that? We'd have porn mags in the car and taping up stretched out snatches. She would just laugh. She didn't care about that stuff. She said it in the interview about myself, and I love the quote. She said it was like switching from one pack of wolves to another pack of wolves, and that's like she nailed it because, you know, she grew up skating with all dudes, you know, behind a supermarket or, you know, at some crusty lawn tramp and, you know, splitting two liters of Coke and sharing cigarettes and just a total guy's world. She made everyone feel so comfortable that no one, like, guarded their words or, like, Felt like they were in mixed company, you know? She was just basically one of the homies. She just happened to have boobs. Initially, I looked at her like, oh, like, she's a girl skater. That's really rad, you know? But then eventually, she was just a skater. But then, like, you know, she is a girl. I tried to hook up with Alyssa a bunch of times. <laughs> she, she used to punch me and kick me and stuff. Like, this one, I was, like, super faded, you know? She's a girl, you know? And there's a, there's a, there's a van full of skaters at some point people are gonna be like, what's up, girl? You know what I mean? So, like... <laughs> I would adopt this, like, employer stance, you know? Like, are we sexually harassing you right now? Like, you could sue us for this. Like, you know, joke, kind of, but all in jest, you know? Like, as an employee of Toy Machine, you're getting fully, like, sexually fucked with right now, <laughs> like, in the workplace, you know? And uh, we would just all laugh about that stuff, you know? I thought her part was amazing and it was perfect. And she really wanted to use the Sundays, which, you know, uh, you know, obviously was like a girly sounding band and I was supportive and I just wanted her to have the part she wanted to have and I wanted her to just be psyched. So you picked the song? Yeah, but I was kind of like coming out of like this weird like, um, I don't want to say hippie, but kind of like, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't, I was like, I don't know, I was young and weird and I listened to the Sundays. I guess that's kind of emotional, huh? I thought it was perfect. Really? I look back at it now and I'm like, fuck, I wish it was Slayer or something. That's what made Welcome to Hell what it was, was that it was like this super eclectic group of people all put together. Even if Chad and I had tension, there was, it was still a special time where we were all doing it for the first time and it felt really good and we all knew it, you know? We all knew every night when we got back, we knew we were working on something special. I guess, you know, it wasn't really that long in general, but at the, looking back, it seemed like it was an eternity. Like I said, it was like a change for all of us, like all of us kind of like taking that leap of faith coming to California, everybody leaving everything to try to come and make it, you know, and nothing was for certain back then. We were just doing it and skateboarding and doing what we loved to do, and a cool group of people came together, you know. So how did things change for you once that part came out? Oh, like, it was like, now, now I was a skateboarder. My whole world changed. I like, knew what the blueprint was to do. You know what I mean? I wanted to be like a pro skater. 
But it was like easier back then, you know, because I was like under Jamie's wing, kind of. We would always try and find cool looking stuff that wasn't as gnarly because, you know, she was like, she was sensitive as well, you know. She wasn't always just like, take me to gnarly stuff. She was like, I can't do that, you know, come on guys, I can't do that. And so we were always trying to find stuff that looked cool for her that maybe was like original or that she could shine on. Just basically like, this is her ability and let's try and find things that, you know, line up with her ability. When did you turn pro? 98. Was that before jump off the building or? It was like at the same. It was like right before it. I never saw so much negativity. The philosophy of, of a lot of kids in the world at that point was this. I'm better than Alyssa, so I should be on Toy Machine. That's like the gist of the letters. We got a, a, not just one, but multiple letters from different people with that same kind of line of thinking. And I was kind of blown away by this. I was like, what? Like, how do you kids not understand what's happening here? Like, she's hands down at this point in time the best girl skater, period. The best style ever of a girl skater, you know? That's why she's on. She's epic at what she does. It's challenging marketing a girl to guys. You know what I mean? That's normally why you buy someone's crap is because you want to be like the person or you look up to them or you want to skate like them, you know? And most teenage boys don't probably want to skate like a girl, um, even though she's badass and she's the best girl skater. I mean, I don't think her board was ever like a bestseller. And I would try like even harder to like make cooler graphics in a way. Like I want to like make sure this board is kick ass. But it's easy for them to say, I want to be like Costin. I wish I was Costin, you know? It's harder for them to think like, I wish I was Alyssa. Didn't Big Brother want you to like skate in a dress or something? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they wanted me to like shoot the cover in a dress. And they offered me like a thousand bucks too. And now thinking back on it, like it wasn't such a big deal, but I was like, I'm not compromising my integrity, you know what I mean? And she was like, nah, you're not getting me to play this like, I'm a girl skateboarder, check me out, alling some gap. And I think Clyde Singleton ended up doing it. Like, yeah. got dressed up and took, the, and took the photo, alling some like, whatever, gap. She'd come to me with this, these questions like, what do I do? And I'd be like, fuck that shit, you know? Don't do it. If, you know, like, if you're not, if they're not gonna give you a cover for being a good skater, then, then fuck it, you know, you don't want to kook it out. She did have an interview where, where she like put makeup on all crazy in Big Brother, but I thought that photo was kind of cool because it was sort of subverted the idea. We never did one thing female, you know? It wasn't, oh, here's our girl pro with a pink ad and sh shit like that, you know? She was treated exactly like everyone else. Like the ads were the same ads I would do for everybody. The boards were the same graphics that any, you know, everything was basically equal treatment. I look back on that with some sort of like happiness because I feel like that helped set whatever tone in there was. Because at the same time, there was a bunch of people who wanted that stuff to happen. That's an Alyssa ad. With a drawing I did of her. I asked Muska, we were talking about if like guys ever got drunk and tried to hit on you on tour. Uh -huh. And I was like, did guys ever do that? And he was like, oh, me. <laughs> well, I think, I think he was kind of fond of me, probably. <laughs>